Hi everyone and welcome back again to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and once again we have JJ. He is the Senior Technical Marketing Specialist from ASUS and he is here uh, to show us one more demonstration of the P67 chipset series of motherboards that is available from ASUS. Mm -hmm. And um, if you watched any of the other videos we put up recently, uh, we did a little bit of testing as well as a full overview of the product line that ASUS has just recently came up, come out with. Today uh, we're just going to do well, we're, we're just going to do a little, fun. little over the clock, a little over the top <laughs> testing here. Uh, we have the Maximus 4 Extreme Motherboard, the Republic of Gamers motherboards with the P67 chipset, highest end uh, motherboard available right now. Um, gone ahead and dropped in three GTX 580s. Mm -hmm. We're currently running, uh, Asus is uh, happy to be the first uh, supporter of triple SLI on the P67 chipset. Uh, we've got our Cooler Master Hyper 212 uh, uh, heatsink fan there. We're running uh, two sticks of Corsair Dominator GT, actually GTX3 memory, uh, which is really nice memory. We have a Crucial C300 SSD. Uh, we have our uh, Thermaltake 1350 watt power supply. And the CPU we've got in here is the flagship CPU for the uh, Sandy Bridge line, which is the Intel Core i7. 2600K, K meaning it is overclockable. So JJ is going to use his uh, considerable overclocking skills and do a manual overclock. We're going to push it to what? You're going to shoot for? We're going to, I don't know. I think we're thinking 5 gigahertz, but who knows? Maybe we'll go for a little bit more. We'll just see how things go. 5 gigahertz, maybe a little bit more even. We'll see if we can get this to boot up, and uh, we'll just give you some quick numbers on that. Yep. Uh, so JJ, why don't you... Uh, yeah, Get so with the UFI. we've got um, our Maximus 4 Extreme here, so pretty much the flagship in terms of the ROG. You know, it's got an outstanding VRM design, the NF200, pretty much all the bells and whistles you could want on Premier board. And just we're going to showcase you some of the performance uh, options you have available to you. Now, uh, while definitely I've spent quite a time tuning these boards, um, it's actually pretty easy to overclock on them. Uh, but we're going to dive in here into this uh, BIOS. We previously did a little bit of an overview on the P8, P67 Pro, and the UFI that you can see on our mainstream boards. And this pretty much mirrors the same options. It just kind of takes it to the next level. We're giving you even more advanced options. Um, one of the special call-out functions, though, that we have here is uh, if we go over to our uh, GPU and DIMM post information, you actually get a visual layout of actually how things are working on the board. So if I go ahead and enter this, you can see that we've actually implemented a map layout to show you what PCIe slots are matched with WIT cards at what speeds, as well as for the DIMMs, what channel they're corresponding to, the frequency that they are, and then the frequency that they're running at. I'm really liking the visual layout there, and it's, uh, it's also telling you the uh, speed that all of your PCI buses are running at. Yeah, correct. So we get to see that it's an NVIDIA GPU mapped uh, to which PCIe corresponding slot. So this is a request we have from a lot of users that sometimes we're com confused that when they put cards in or they put something in, what was it actually running at? How was it connected? Making sure that they were getting what they were looking for. Uh, and this also, of course, can work with the PCIe switches that we've put on the board that allow you to also electrically shut off the actual slots. Oh, okay. So if they have multiple GPUs in there and for whatever reason they want to shut them off, they can just switch those into the off position and cut those lanes off too. Just another example of some of the advanced features available with the ROG board. Yeah, uh, definitely taken to the nth degree. So here we're going to focus, like I said, on just a quick overclocking. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just jump into the AI clock overclock tuner. Uh, go to manual. We're going to go to our all cores. Um, I think, you know, I think we were shooting for five, but I think we're going to try to see if we can't go a little bit higher. What do you think, 52 multi, maybe 5.2 gigahertz? Uh, that sounds good. Okay. So let's go ahead and do I mean, 52. if you're being modest, right, 5.2 gigahertz. On air? I mean, it's just yeah. it's an air cooler. We'll go ahead and uh, go with 1866 on the memory. Uh, since we don't want to super stress the IMC, as we know that the higher frequency we go, the harder it gets to also maintain high memory speeds. But uh, I think that's a nice bump up. Uh, we'll go ahead and also tighten up the timings a little bit. Go cast 8. And uh, let's go ahead and enter in our, our DigiVRM uh, options. As we can see here, we have a huge amount of options that correspond to the VRM, uh, to the VRAM, to pretty much all each parts, and we're giving you full control. Um, but the board, like I said, being tuned pretty nicely, we're just going to have to enable a couple things. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and enable some load line compensation to compensate for any droop. Uh, make sure that we get a steady voltage at this higher clock speed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bump up our switching frequency, which is going to help us drive the higher clock speeds. Uh, the phase has already been set to extreme, so that's allowing us to use that full 
high quality eight phase array, all 100% are being run right now. And uh, that's pretty much all we're going to adjust right there. No need to, to make too many changes. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put uh, 1.5 volts for the CPU and then our standard 1.65 for the DRAM. So that's what I, what I really like about the, uh, the UEFI BIOS here. Uh, not only is it red because it's the ROG version, um, but I mean, just really easy to read just uh, with the graphical layout. And I like how as you're going between each uh, you know, each different option in the menu there, it's giving you a description on the right side, so yeah, maybe well, that's that much more confidence in the... It, it's great that you called that out. We actually did try to spend a lot of time uh, when, when you actually went to each one of the options uh, in, the, in the interface that they gave you detailing in this area because that was a lot of feedback that we got. A lot of people, sometimes they go into the BIOS and they're like, I don't know what this option does. So we tried to spend more time making sure that people were understanding of what those options were. Very nice. Okay, one of the last uh, features here that I want to show you as part of the new UEFI BIOS on the Maximus 4 Extreme is also we have what's called uh, SPD information that's now been built in. Uh, what this essentially correlates to is the SPD, the Serial Presence Detect, that's built into all memory chips. So this allows users to quickly, easily go to their DIMM slots and actually see corresponding information. So we can see the manufacturer, the module, uh, the serial number, if it's there, production, XMP profiling support, the speeds, pretty much all that information. So really, once again, reaffirming, you know, its position in terms of being a performance product, giving you a lot of options. So we've got 5.2 gigahertz dialed in here. Now let's see if we can go ahead and get it to boot and see if we can get a bench, excuse me, a benchmark. All righty. All right. Save and reset. Yep. So, um... I don't think it was too difficult. I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the overall options that are present in the BIOS make it pretty easy for anybody that's looking to equip the K-series processor, whether it's the 2500K or 2600K. It's going to have a really easy time being able to get to these clock speeds. And um, I think, as you noted earlier, one of the impressive things with, uh, you know, a good quality cooler like this 212, uh, which is, you know, moderately priced, gets you, um, you know, really, really high clock speeds um, without being loud and, you know, without being really complicated in terms of, of trying to enable these speeds. Yeah, you can definitely tell why it is so popular, the, yeah. the Hyper 212. Um, now, as far as uh, our GPUs go here, we got three 580s, and um, you were mentioning with Alien versus Predator. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to run that benchmark and the scaling, um, especially as compared to the 400 series with uh, the GPUs. Um, with the 500 series, you're getting... It's actually just as good. I mean, in general, with the NVIDIA Fermi architecture, so the 400 series, uh, which was, you know, 460, 470, 480 class, 450 parts, offered really impressive scaling, going from one card to two cards, uh, three cards, even four-way configurations. And we're continuing to see that trend here. So uh, we're hoping to see at least 150 frames out of a three-way configuration, um, with normally a single card, uh, depending on the test bed, giving you somewhere between probably about... 55 to about 70 frames. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what kind of numbers we have. So we've gone ahead and booted up here into Windows. Let's go ahead and open up uh, our ROG CPU-Z. Oh, we have a special version. We are unveiling this today, uh, the, the ROG special edition version of CPU-Z. Yeah, and as you can see right here, we've got uh, 5.2 uh, gigahertz on our system. So we are, in fact, uh, run, run, running that speed, and uh, there we go. We can see magnified there, 5.2 gigahertz. 5.2. And uh, our memory, it's 1866 Cat's 8 1T. So this is definitely a, a, f a fast system. Very nice. So we're going to go ahead now and uh, run our Aliens vs Predator run. Now by default, uh, this is going to go ahead and utilize the full resolution of the screen. So we've got 1900 by 1200, um, soft shadows, um, the ambient occlusion, tessellation, um, all those high-end effects are all being rendered right now, real-time, on the system. It's utilizing the CPU, the entire bus, so uh, we're pushing it and seeing uh, you know, how everything holds up. So all eye candy turned on. Pretty much. 1900 by 1200, and uh, that is buttery smooth. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, this is the type of system you want for high performance, uh, high resolution panel gaming, so 24 inch, 30 inch panels, or even, um, you know, getting into really interesting stuff like 3D vision um, or a 3D vision surround uh, using two way, three way configurations really enable you to get a high level of performance. Especially the, like multi monitor setups. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can see definitely everything's still running solid, and uh, you can see here the fans slightly ramping up on, on the uh, CPU side, but even at 5.2 gigahertz under that load, uh, we're still maintaining very impressive, actually, CPU temperatures. Nice. Yeah. 
So all together an impressive platform. So benchmarks uh, probably about 50% through here. It's getting towards the trail end. So far everything's solid, and uh, you know I think we're gonna I think we're gonna have a pretty good run here. Are you saying um, with a single? 580, you probably get 55 to 70 ish. Yeah, yeah. Frames. And, um, you know, it, it depends really on the test bed. Like I said, as long as you have a fast enough system, you're probably going to be closer to about the 65 to about 70 frame rate. Okay. Um, that's assuming that you're running stock clocks. With our cards, of course, we have the voltage feet feature, so we could really push them up past the clock frequencies that are right now. But uh, to keep things, you know, just showcased on what we're trying to do right now, we're running everything stock as far as the GPUs go. All right. So it looks like we uh, finished up the run here. Not bad. Let's check on our results. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Documents, Alien vs. Predator, and here we have our run. And uh, we can see we've gotten to 168 frames. 168. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, get the magnifier Which, which I could tell while I was watching it, but I didn't want to spoil. So there, there, <laughs> there we can see. Uh, very impressive setup. Very nice. So I think uh, altogether, you know, it just shows you some of the performance potential that's uh, available on Intel's brand new P67 architecture, you know, uh, and, and an amazing board and a great set of GPUs. So uh, definitely anybody that's interested in high performance gaming, it's a platform to get. Yeah, so if you're looking for the best of the best uh, right now, you're probably, you're looking at it right here, um, especially with the triple 580 setup. But uh, this has just been a little sampling, a little taste of what's available uh, with the new architecture, with the new ASUS boards. Um, that's, that's what's out there. So thank you again, JJ, you. for stopping by and showing us all of the fantastic and wonderful toys that ASUS has to offer. And um, thanks to NVIDIA for making these cards. Thanks to Cooler Master for making fantastic cooler. And uh, thanks to all of you out there for watching New Egg TV. I'm Paul, and we will see you next time.